The last time you put any thought into dioramas may have been in grade school when you were gluing action figures or plastic dinosaurs into a shoebox. However, dioramas have <laughs> However, dioramas can be found all around us and are an exciting and interesting art form that have been giving us windows into history and science and fantasy for almost 200 years. This week, we're taking a peek into dioramas and diorama culture and spoke with three individuals who've made dioramas a part of their lives. Stick around and maybe you'll have a little fun. I moved my chair into the studio today. It's too hot in the garage. The term diorama literally means through that which is seen. The concept of the diorama is usually credited to Louis Daguerre, known for his invention of daguerreotypes, and his partner, artist Charles Marie Bouton. Their diorama was a set of illuminated paintings that rotated while the viewer peered through a window. Their work led to modern theater design and movie making techniques. Today, dioramas are often educational in nature, used by students to physically illustrate a topic. Dioramas as an art form display everything from moments in history to reflections on personal experience. One artist who creates such pieces is Emily Muhlenberg of Tiny Tableau Shop in New Orleans, Louisiana, who creates commissioned shadow boxes tailored to her clients' personal life stories. I talked with Emily, who is also my cousin, about her work, her inspirations, and its connection to her city. So I started making shadow boxes in the fall of 2017. I uh, made my first one just for myself. It wasn't until I went to the Oddities and Curiosities Expo here in New Orleans that I realized there wasn't creepy, cute, shadow boxes represented at this craft exposition. I decided I would sign up for a booth for the following year and I spent that whole year making about 20 shadow boxes and prints. Although I didn't sell very much, the fact that I did it was was more of a, a step forward than anything. From that point, I've basically been doing work on commission-based requests. I asked Emily about the types of materials that she uses. Mostly paper. Also an assortment of things I've collected over the years. A lot of it is found objects or things that I'll, I'll get from friends. So now I have just kind of large Rubbermaid containers of art supplies. We discuss why she chose the name Tiny Tableau. I wanted to kind of choose a word that encompassed the style of art that I create. So tableau means a small scene, and well, it means a scene in general. And then I added tiny so it would have alliteration. I, and I also wanted to have the French influence. Since I am living in New Orleans, I wanted to identify as an, a New Orleans artist. The last thing we talked about is how Emily personalizes her commissions for her clients. I always have a conversation with the person that makes the request to kind of get a feel for what they are trying to get feeling-wise from, from the shadow box. I was asked to do a, uh, a shadow box for a woman that was retiring from the Coast Guard earlier this year. I sent her a questionnaire. She, sorry, I have paper stuck to me. <laughs> I'm in my workspace, so it's like... She replied and answered all my questions, and she said, um, I want a skeleton leaving a dark space going into the light. I want a ship to represent my first Magellan journey and certification. I want wrenches to represent my experience as a diesel mechanic upon that ship. I want a poem that reads as such. And so she had all of these very specific requests and I made it work. I basically turned the shadow box into a room honoring her Coast Guard history. That was probably, for me, a really rewarding experience to not only be challenged making something completely different, but also honoring the needs of someone that had to tell a very specific story. I'm going to 
take the time to find out what it is that you're trying to get from this piece so that it speaks to you. It's also going to be one of a kind. I don't mass produce anything. I don't make five of the same piece of work and sell it into different homes. They're specifically made for you. I also had to know, is it diorama or diorama? Diorama. The Art Institute of Chicago holds two of our favorite diorama collections. One is the Thorn Miniature Rooms, a set of 68 tiny replicas of well-appointed interiors representing periods from the late 13th century to the 1930s, designed by Narcissa Niblack Thorn. The interiors feature exquisitely detailed and handcrafted furniture, art, and tapestries. The other is the collection of shadow boxes created by Joseph Cornell, an artist and filmmaker inspired by surrealism. His Cornell boxes are assemblage works that juxtapose Victorian style photographs, found objects, and collage to display many nostalgic scenes that nod to the macabre and surreal. Not all dioramas need to be meticulously designed in order to be celebrated. In Trove's very own home city of Milwaukee, an annual celebration of dioramas takes place called Diorama Rama. The originator of Diorama Rama and National Diorama Month in March is Dee Kirschling. I mean, I'm just a regular person. I've always just liked tiny little things. Dee told us about the decision to create a holiday just for dioramas. Seven or eight years ago, it was it was March. It was a, a cold and boring March, and I made a diorama just for fun of like my pets on a camping trip. And I was like, "Wow, I'm going to make one every March." And then uh, we just decided to make it an event. March is just really kind of a slow month. There's not a lot going on for a lot of people. I decided to make it a holiday, and it's really easy. You just have to say it is, and then there you go. And then uh, my husband, five years ago, was like, you should have a diorama for National Diorama Month. And I said, you know, I should. The first one was at Blackbird Bar, which is not far from where I live. And that's when, in classic Milwaukee fashion, we realized my family had lived across the street from her for 20 years. That's my old house. I asked her if she prefers that participants use handmade items in their dioramas or found objects. I, I have room in heart for both. And I will say a lot of the dioramists get very concerned that they're going to be blown out of the water by something that is totally intricately handmade or, or whatever. And, and one thing I like about my event uh, is that it's really open to any type of material. I asked if she thought the popularity of dioramas has grown. People love tiny things and I think that has a head has had a huge uptick um, just because we've all been looking for crafts and activity to do because we can't do anything else. Um, and I think we've had more interest in the, the event has grown larger every year that I've had it. We've, we've, uh, I was at Anodyne two years in a row, but other than that, we've outgrown uh, every venue that we've, that we've been at every year with more people coming, more people, more dioramists wanting to display their work. It's been really amazing. I had to ask Dee if she had a favorite museum diorama. I love the Milwaukee Public Museum. It is home to a famous diorama, one of the, the first realistic wildlife diorama. They have a muskrat diorama, and it was built in, I want to say, 1890 um, by Char Charles Axley. I'll we'll have to look that up. It's kind of the the first person who really did something like that. I think it's neat that we in Milwaukee, because I love Milwaukee, Robins and all, um, have that kind of a piece of diorama history. <gasps> Ooh. Um, I tend to say, let's see, what do I tend to say? Diorama. I tend to say diorama. If you want to sound like a fancy lady, you say, oh, I'm going to a diorama-rama. If you want to sound like you're from them streets, diorama-rama. Interestingly enough, the winner of 2019's Diorama Rama was Emily's sister, and also my cousin, Elise Muhlenberg. <laughs> hey! The first thing I asked Elise was, has she always been interested in making dioramas? No, and I was trying to remember like the last time I 
made a diorama and I want to say it was like fourth grade. I think that was like the last diorama I made. So, um, and this one like spiraled out of control because I used to do clay as a child all the time. Like I was obsessed with making clay miniatures of stuff. And so it was kind of fun to revisit that hobby. I knew I wanted to do something positive. I made about 85% of this diorama from scratch. I made every part of these dolls. Their bodies are made out of cardboard wrapped in yarn, clay heads and hands that I painted, pajamas I sewed, hair that I made out of yarn and flat ironed. I don't even remember how I made John's glasses. I didn't make any of the flowers in the room, but here they're nicely wrapped in cellophane. Um, I made everything on the bed here. The guitar has six strings on it. The guitar and recorder are made out of clay. I didn't weave this basket, but I made the phone, and the safe is made out of cardboard. These vases are made out of ping pong balls, and of course there's carpet and molding. The hotel has electricity. Curtains are hemmed. This was such a fun project. I really loved making every part of it. I hope you enjoyed this tour. I think I spent six weeks on it. It was so much fun. I loved making my diorama. I would say diorama. <laughs> diorama Rama 2020 was unfortunately canceled due to the COVID pandemic. Erin and I at Trove had created a piece based on this year's theme, the future. Our piece showed a vision of the world of tomorrow as an exhibit from a 1950s World Fair. A sideshow circus tent houses a rotating future vision of an overpopulated Earth circled by a multitude of off-world orbiters. A stroll behind the tent warns of the dystopian truth about a world that is obsessed with the pursuit of excess. Entropy, pollution, and the constant threat of war make this future bleak and an ever encroaching possibility. The future is here. The future is now.